this is under the felt cushions. Got some boo boos here. <sighs> this has been washed, but it's probably dirty again a little bit. This is the original though, and it's in very nice condition for the original. Boo boo's here. Probably do a better job touching these up a little bit. After the finish is missing there, those are old as are these. Still shiny. Okay, we gotta make a decision before we put this plate in. Because the next time I put it in, it's gonna stay in. These areas over here, where the tape is, I'm ready to spray again to match it up to where, to here, this area. To here this was pretty beat up as were these but we're blending them into this plate color here so it needs to be a little bit more shiny a little more gloss in here maybe a little more yellow but i can do that it won't be perfect but it'll be pretty darn good and if you look at it when it's all strung in together with the dampers in if the is not picked up by your periphery you don't see it and your eye go right there then it's a good job this should blend in pretty nice some of these i can touch up these little ones see on the edge here with the right materials let's see that got there. I don't know what this is here. It might be damaged. I think so. You can see that strange color underneath here. They had the knobs in place and everything before they gilded the plate. Huh. See, right there it is. Hmm. It's pretty much the original stuff there. That orange color. It's like mannequins in the store in a clothing store all right there we have it so i get this touched up and we'll get it in now we're getting ready to put the plate in touching it up um This is the original over here, and this is brand new over here. This has been tempered down, tinted down to match this. And all of these were pretty beat up from here out, all of them. And they've been touched up a little bit. This, of course, is the original. This one needs the shading put in, as does this area and this area. This is just sanded down, ready to be sprayed. And uh, it's in amazingly good condition for as old as it is. All these struts. Take a look at them here as we go around. You can see that 
mannequin color. They didn't even get close to the knobs. I guess they didn't want to get any of the gilding onto the brass knob. So they went and went, stayed away from it. There's one there. Anyways, um, here's a section that needs some touching up. Right here. I don't know what happened here. Huh. Something landed there. Something looks like something dripped there or something. I don't know if that'll clean up. I don't know what that is. Oh, something took the gold paint off right down to the the, the uh, primer, if you want to call it that. That mannequin color. There it is all over the place. And this, of course, is under the felt. And it's in very good shape. I might be able to get away with touching up a few of these, like this one here and that one there. You can touch the brush on some of these on the edge here, but to try to fix just that boo-boo with a matching color is almost impossible perfect to get it perfect and to age the same so that's a question um this looks good probably could use another washing a little bit huh that looks like a factory run right there it is see that right there where the varnish went over the edge and that's all original stuff camera can see better than I can anyways these match pretty well to the original and they were beat up all of this was anyways we're gonna do that pretty it up a little bit and then we'll uh, put it in Here's another shot of the plate here. I mean, I mean the soundboard. I'm gonna finish press, polishing this up here, giving it a shellacking as we go. But here, just another quick look at this. The artwork is very nice and very well preserved. This was taken from a photograph of the original. So there we have it. Okay, we got mica powder in here, and this is a half ass spray gun <clears throat> because I use so little of it. It makes it easy to clean the gun in the spray cup. I just throw it away after. It's a peanut butter jar, Teddy. Anyways what I'm doing. Keep stirring it up because it lumps up in the bottom. Got so little to spray here. color may not be correct right now but this is a base I can go over this to match this here to this this is good the object is to get it nice and smooth and even and we still got some stuff in there a little dust other than that it looks pretty good let's try down here and we did this little spot that was rusty out here. And uh, I'm wondering whether or not I should uh, put some coloring in along the edge here. See, we've got some blob here. Some beat up coloring here. If I take this off and just spray from here out, I don't know. 
not that bad for the original, 150 years old. So we'll probably leave it, seeing how this is covered with a molding up to here anyway. I could probably hit some of these with my paintbrush on the inside here. But if you try to touch up these spots, the new material and trying to blend it in in this area is almost impossible. And the material ages different than this. It will show maybe in a year, maybe not. But right now, these areas over here, I'm just gonna blend them, finish blending this in with a different material, uh, or a different tint in my, my turpentine here. And I think we're gonna have to use a little bit of uh, burnt umber mixed in here to give it that brown antique look. But we'll see. Let's try. This is the powdery mess. I've had some of these bronze powders for 20 years, some of them. Um, been collecting them for a long time. And uh, this is a mica powder. This is the new stuff. This is pretty nice. And they're all nice. Especially some of these here that are rather striking. If I can hold the camera and open one of these up. What is this? Oh, this is Venus. This is the good stuff. United States Bronze Powder Company. I don't know if they're still around, maybe. But if you call them up, you get all kinds of weird, weird responses. Nice stuff. I used that for a long time on lots of plates. And all of these, well, what happened was some of these cans have been open a long time, like this one. And they're at different stages of tarnishing. Some are a little green, some are a little yellow. And uh, anyways, it was very important to match the color on the plate because this old plate we're doing was in such good shape that we don't think we need to refinish it. Take a look over here. Here's the piano. I'm getting ready for the plate. I have to uh, pumice stone this a little bit here with a rag. I mean a cloth, and uh, put it together. Got to put the nose bolts in. Okay, this is the plate I was talking about. This is the original. It's amazingly good condition for 1867. This is my attempt to match it over here. Now, see, it's really shiny because it's new. But this is the real McCoy. This is the brass powder, and it will tarnish in time, just like that over there. But I'm not going to wait that long. I'm going to put some shading in here to better match this to this. But after the agraph job and all that work, we finally got this looking pretty good here. And I'm going to put it in as soon as I get the nose bolts in. Over here. And we did show this decal before. This is a photographic reproduction. And it came out really nice. We lost a little bit of the little hairpin lines around, but not too many. They, they fade away a little bit here. What's most important is we got the shading right. And the gold and the letters are, the numbers are clean. But see this shading around here? That little like gray green shading? And that's what they don't give you in a commercial decals for your chickering or whatever. Anyways, we did it. Actually, the client did it, the owner of the piano. So here we go, let's put that plate. Okay, finally, after a long pause. Anyways, I had to, getting ready to put that molding in, it goes right here. I had to put some more finisher on here. It was lacking. Just put a little polish in there, that's it. The rest of it's ready to go, pretty much. 
And this is, of course, this is the original molding. Lucky to have it. You know, I think it's made out of pine, but I'm not sure. It looks it. Might be soft maple. But anyways, um, this is where it goes. In here. That lines up pretty darn good for a 150-year-old piece of wood. And right here, we have... the marks that were there right here see that's the telltale sign of where it went and it went here like so we're gonna glue this one in now but before I do I'm gonna put the finish on it try to put a pretty good finish on it it doesn't have to be a lot just Pretty nice to match this because I don't want to be putting the finish on here and interfering with this. I, I'm done with this. I don't want to be screwing around with that no more. So, um, okay, we'll glue this in and uh, go from there. The finish on the top can be put on the same time as the side is here. I'm going to do some repair on the side, but it doesn't need that much. It's amazing. This is the original finish on this piano. All right, so let's put this molding in here, and that'll be, while that's drying, I'm gonna put the nose bolts in, put some finish on here, and the holes. And then uh, we'll continue with the 33B Saga. Okay, here's that molding that we, uh, getting ready to put in I just sanded the heck out of it here looks nice the whole thing and of course we're gonna put some shellac on here give it a coat now, I'm not gonna put a real big French polish on here because I gotta glue it into the piano but it's gonna be nice if I put too much finish on it might interfere with my clamping it up and might damage the finish on here but look at how nice that looks huh a little bit of coloring on here and we'll leave that dry the one on this side and that's it make it look nice hard to do this with one hand but here we go isn't that pretty 150 year old wood and I don't have to make it I don't have to go looking for it and I don't have to worry about it being aged it's aged all right there we have it isn't that a pretty nice piece of wood that'll go in right back perfect where it was so let's do it making ready to put the plate in at last and right now i'm putting these nose bolts in i just got them just screwed in there by hand they have to be set at the right height and there's uh, 19 of them also that's a lot of them um, and these are the heights here and this is what we do we don't just pop them in I've uh, resorted to putting a drop of linseed oil on here raw linseed right like that see that's a little much I only got one hand Put a little drop of raw linseed and then in the graphite like so just graphite the tip then we screw it in linseed oil makes a good lubricant it's good for the wood hydrous holds moisture but anyways it makes a good grease for dry putting these in they just slide right in with that graphite I'm gonna have to do the finishing here first on the side here because after the plates in I'm not gonna be able to do anything between here very much it's gonna be kind of kind of tricky as it is so I got to put the finish on the side before the plate goes in 
And then uh, after the finish is on and those are all set at the right height, I guess we're ready to drop it in. That would be very nice uh, at last. After some long delays, unfortunately, with the pandemic and other things. So uh, well, there's our beautiful decal. It was worth the effort. Oh yeah, that's a that's a do-it-yourself photographic reproduction of the original that was there. So that's pretty cool. Onward. You're gonna stand this pretty heavy duty. This is what we do. It's old finish here. I don't know what this is, but it didn't turn black. It's 220 paper, it's pretty rough. And uh, that's what we do. You can sand most of the boo-boos out, most of the discoloration out like this. Just take it right down as far as you dare. Oh, it's got a nice, pretty heavy finish on here. Look at that. I'm going to be able to polish this up. Do the same thing everywhere. See all of this surface here. That's not too bad for 150 years old, I guess. But... Other places it is. So while I'm doing the inside area here, this inside, I'll do the top two. Might as well. We're going to be real careful not to damage anything after this point on. Uh, not that we weren't careful, but now we've no need to put any more boo-boos in here. I know a lot of the heavy-duty work is done. So we'll sand this down as much as we dare. And we'll see what it looks like soon. Thirty-three B. Okay, I sanded the heck out of this with two twenty paper and a rubber block. And I already hit this with alcohol. Here's some here. Just alcohol. Nothing else. And let's see what it looks like. See? Oh, boy. This is the first thing you do after sanding it. You see what you got. And it's going to look nice. It's amazing what it does. You can melt that finish back. See? But don't stay there too long. Over these boo-boos here. See all these scratches? See the scratches, but it's melting the finish back somewhat. I have to go over it a couple times so it penetrates and gets it soft right there. And then uh, we can French polish over this after. Just like that. It's going to look nice. I don't know what this finish is. It's, uh, Boy, it seems like nitrocellulose. We were discussing that, my business partner and I. Doesn't have any odor when you sand it off. Got to put a piece of veneer there. We got some. And uh, can't get the inside here. Got to show you. This is a problem. That plate scraped there on the way out. And on the way in. And I went on the way out again a couple times. I had it in here. But with all these 19 nose bolts there, this fits rather snug on those. And you cannot move that plate any way at all. So I'm going to have to grind a little bit off the back of the plate here to fit in. Because I don't want this to happen again. I'm going to attempt to melt this in with alcohol. But it probably won't happen. 
if I, I gotta stay there a long time and almost rub all the finish off to get penetrate those. Now, I can fix those with my hot knife, uh, the burning knife I have. And uh, I could probably melt those right back in, those boo-boos. Everything else looks pretty good though. Yeah, it's gonna look sharp when it's polished again. Very nice up here. Good, nice color. Anyways. We'll continue with this. Wish I had someone to hold the camera, but I don't. Okay, alcohol, alcohol. Now I got a camera on a tripod here. Let's see. Wet this down good. Wow, it looks pretty good. Yes, these guys, 1867, they had a special finish on here. There's no doubt about it. I don't know what it is, but whatever it is, it has no odor when you're sanding it. And some gum resin finishes did. Very distinct odor, but this one doesn't have no smell. It behaves almost like nitrocellulose. That is possible. I can start putting shellac on here now. French polish it in, like that side. See what it looks like. I have some here to start. This saturated rag is okay for this right now. We just want to get some shellac on that surface and have it kind of bond and melt in. That's what I just did with pure alcohol. Besides, you get to see all your boo-boos when you hit it with the alcohol, it melts them in. Here's some shellac here. I don't want to get that over the soundboard. Boy, that would be bad. This is shellac now, but my rag is saturated. Just kind of like etching into the surface. There. That's enough of this. I gotta get it. I gotta change the cloth. It's too too soggy. No good. Good for this. Laying it on quickly and rubbing it in. Okay. This side too. pretty good all this is below the plate this pinky stuff here
yep, these boo-boos here. I'm gonna have to hot knife them to get these out of here. They're uh, too deep. You could eventually melt them with the alcohol. But you'd be washing away a lot of finish and uh, we don't want to do that. So I'll take my hot knife after and show that. Fix those boo-boos, especially that one way down the end down there. So let this dry.